Okay, two-dimensional momentum. Web assign problem two. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. It's, there's no real quick and fast way to do this. I'll make it as straightforward as I can. But we have a puck that's moving to the right. And I'm just going to go ahead and put a dotted line across my page here to show the path that the puck is moving. I'm going to call it puck number one. It's got mass M. We'll just call it M1. And it's going to hit puck number two. They have equal mass. That's going to be kind of nice. So a little bit later, it's going to hit puck number two. And so here's number two, and puck number one hits it. Boom. There's a collision here. Now, it's important to realize that initially, this is moving to the right at V, V1, V1, velocity of puck 1. It's all in the X. Therefore, momentum 1 is equal to M1, V1. Don't get, don't get momentum and velocity confused. Momentum also has the mass in it. Because the two pucks have the same mass, it's going to simplify things. The mass will divide out. But let's not be too hasty with it at first. The problem gives us everything about puck one after the collision. It shoots off here at some speed v1 prime, and that's given. Also what's given is angle, I'll call it theta. So all that's specified. I'm not going to write the values because you all have different values. <clears throat> I'm just going to come up with the equation, show you how to solve the problem. If this gets knocked this way, then puck two is going to get knocked this way and we're going to call it phi, the angle phi. Now this is we have to find, and v2 prime we have to find. That's the objective of this problem. All right, so let's consider, here's what is very important. The momentum in the x direction has to be conserved. The momentum in the y direction has to be conserved independently. So we've got to take both directions. Let's start with the x direction. And Let's write the before and after. Well, all of the original momentum is in the x direction. So m1 v1 is equal to, this is the momentum before. I'm going momentum total before is equal to momentum total after. You know, x, x, so sub x. <laughs> so all the momentum is in the x direction before. Then after, you got momentum from puck 1. That's going to be m1, the mass of the puck, times the x value. Here, I'll just kind of draw that lightly in here. See, it's moving in the x direction and in the y direction. So this is, this is the momentum of puck 1 in the x after. This is the momentum of puck 1 in the y direction after. See, this can be a little confusing, right? This is a subscript 1 here. All right, so, but in the x direction, what is that? Well, this is a right angle here, so it's just the x component. So m1, the mass of puck 1, times the, the x speed, the speed in the x direction, is the hypotenuse v1 prime cosine of theta. And then, however, there is x momentum in puck 2 now as well. So in like manner, we just add m2 v2 prime times, okay, that breaks up into these two components. And this component is v2 prime times cosine of phi. So there you go. So that's our answer for what's going on in the x direction. Now since the masses are the same, we can divide all of them out. That's pretty nice. What we're trying to find is v2 and the theta. So this thing here, let's solve for this at this point. v2 prime cosine of phi then is equal to v1 minus v1 prime cosine of theta. Now, that whole thing is v2 in the x direction after the collision. That's really important.
we're supposed to find the speed of puck number two. Well, we now know it's speed in the x direction because you have all this information in your problem. So now let's do the y direction. Well, thankfully, in the y direction, momentum total in the y before is momentum total in the y after. And what is that? That's right, it's zero. Why? Because there was none to begin with. So this component here in the y and this component here in the y have to be the same values. Momentum 2y prime. Okay? That's what we're looking for. We're looking for the, you know, we need the information in the momentum in the y direction. So let's go ahead then and just simply write that this value of momentum is this value of momentum oppositely directed. So m2 v2 prime times the sine of phi is equal to this momentum which is m1 v1 prime hypotenuse sine of theta. Now you have all this information. These m's go away again. So the important information, you know, v2 in the x, we want v2 in the y. Well, v2 prime sine of theta, uh, sine of phi, this, is equal to v1 prime sine of theta, and that is v2 prime in the y direction. So there we go. These two pieces, the the x component and y component of the velocity of puck number two is all given here. So what we have is then v2x prime and we have v2y prime. We have those values. Okay, you've computed the numbers. And so here is v Two prime. V2 prime is equal to the square root of V2 x prime squared plus V2 y prime squared. It's kind of hard to almost say, isn't it? But you have these numbers, this number and this number. Plug them in, you get your answer for V2 prime. And then how about the angle? Here's V. Well, we've got opposite, we've got adjacent values phi is equal to the inverse tangent of opposite v2y prime over adjacent v2x prime. That gives you that. You know, we have the number here, we have this number. You have just solved the problem.